Hello, today I'll be showing you how to replace the worn out drivetrain on my Kona Scab. Helping me will be my assistant. His name is Hugo. First step is to make sure you've purchased the correct replacement items. The cassette must be compatible with the rear hub and the chain must be compatible with the cassette. The front rings are a bit more forgiving and most will work universally. However, it's always worth jumping on Google if you think your bike might be unusual in some way, particularly if it's very old. The next step is to find the right tools. We need three special tools for this job. The first is a chain breaker that looks like this. The other two are a cassette spanner and a chain whip. You use the chain whip to grab onto the rear cassette so that you can use the cassette spanner effectively to remove the cassette from the rear hub. The first thing we need to do is remove the back wheel. To do this, we start by undoing the quick release on the back wheel. Then unclipping the brakes so the wheel can come out. And finally pulling the wheel out of its position. Now we remove the quick release mechanism from the back wheel and put it aside, making sure not to drop any of the bits. Then we grab our cassette spanner and our chain whip. Sit the cassette spanner in place. Make sure the chain whip is in place really sturdily. And once it's on and secure, it will take quite a lot of force to get it off. And now that's off, we're halfway. Now it's time to put on the new cassette. The first thing we have to do when we get the cassette out of the packet is to make sure that all the cogs are aligned and to make sure the grooves on the inside line up with the grooves on the rear hub. Then we take our cassette spanner again. We don't need the chain whip this time and tighten up the cassette. It needs to be very tight. I think the spec is about 45 newton meters. So if you've got a torque wrench, you can measure it out. But I just tighten it up as tight as I can without feeling like I'm going to break it. If you have an aluminium cassette, you might want to be a bit more careful and it's probably a good idea to get a torque wrench. Now we're finished with the cassette. So we can just put the quick release mechanism back in the wheel and put that aside for now. Now we use the chain breaker to push the pin out of the chain and break the old chain to free it from the frame. At this stage, Hugo had detected I was running low on dog saliva. So he came by to top me up. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> what a good dog. Now that we've broken the chain, we need to count the links in it and make sure they're exactly the same as the number of links in the new chain. Usually you'll have to break the new chain using the chain breaking tool to make sure they're the same length. I've used a cable tie to hold the rear derailleur down and make it easier to thread the chain through. Then we need to thread the chain back on, making sure it goes through the front and the rear derailleurs correctly. Then you reconnect the chain and you're done.